Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, this is Free Friday. So, hey, did you know this fact that our amygdala in our brain helps protect us from harm? And when we're bound in our amygdala, we cannot love. Did anybody know that? I'm just now, good morning to all of you fresh out of the shower today. Happy Friday to all of you, wherever you are. I'm welcoming you today from the beautiful Sacramento, California. It's a little overcast today, um, but beautiful weather. So yeah, did you know that fact? That we cannot love, we cannot act in love when we're bound in working with our amygdala, which is our feeling part of our brain. It's that part that protects us from harm. So I'm Amy Miller, and I've, I've been on a spiritual journey since I was about 10 years old. And I have discovered recently some of the most powerful tools that I've ever come across in my life for connecting with God on a deeply spiritual level. And as I learn about them, I'm sharing them with you. And over the last few weeks, we've, um, well, except for last week, which we, we interrupted the series by, by sharing some, some brand new things that <clears throat> are going to be available to all of you next week. I'm so excited. All of the products that we talked about last week are going to be available. Well, exception of two of them are going to be available to everyone next week. So I'm so excited. And if you get to be a part of the, one of the, if you go to one of the post convention um, tour areas in, in your area, you can get all of the products um, at a discounted price. Plus, ooh, plus this oil. This is a roller bottle that you cannot purchase, but you can get it. The only way that you can get it is through the, the tour that's coming near you. Okay, that's beside. Um, in fact, I'm gonna put some of this on today. It's amazing. Okay, so, um, over the last few weeks, we've been sharing some emotional development tools, which really can help us spiritually mature. And if you haven't ever focused on the emotional component of your development, um, some would say that you can't develop spiritually. And um, all last month, we focused on true change, change that comes from the inside out. Uh, we talked about earlier this month, we focused on breathing life into our spirit, which is where the foundation of our wellness lies. You guys know our wellness pyramid, right? So all of these parts here, the eating whole foods and exercise, movement, rest, and managing our stress. I could teach classes on, on each one of these components, but um, these are our lifestyle components. This is our health care and our spiritual foundation. We've been focusing a lot on this spiritual foundation and being able to mature spiritually when we also focus on developing ourselves emotionally as well. And unfortunately, as a society, we have a tendency to focus all of our wellness efforts up here when there's this huge pyramid of building blocks beneath that that we have a tendency to ignore. So, um, so we're stepping back and looking at the big picture and um, we've been diving deep into experiencing true lasting change. And if you want access to all of these, you can go straight to our blog, threelifeessentials.com forward slash resources, and you can find all of those. Um, we talked about a new way to experience Emmanuel, God with us through interactive journaling. And um, we delved into attachment styles and how we can experience true connections with others. We started naming the big six right? Anybody want to share what the big six are and what they can do for us? And now we're continuing to discuss how we can return to joy when we're stuck in one of those big six. So, um, so yeah, um, today we're going to be free from being stuck, free from bondage, free from barriers, free to live, free to return to joy, free to be well, true freedom today. So I'm curious, the big six, right? Okay. Sadness, anger, fear, 
disgust, hopeless despair. Anybody experience the big six emotions this week or maybe even this morning? <laughs> if yes, comment below which ones. Um, I will say I experienced sadness this week. I experienced um, m mostly sadness, I think, this week. And I experienced a little bit of anger as well um, with something my boy destroyed. So, um, so, so we're going to talk through this last two weeks ago, we talked about how to, if we're stuck in one of those motions, because we talked about how, how they are designed to our brains are wired actually to experience these. Um, but what happens when we're stuck in those, you know, what happens when we're stuck? So, um, let me see if I can find um, my notes from today. I want to make sure I'm on the right page here. Okay, so we talked about um, those big shicks and shame is when we're experiencing, when we're saying to ourselves, I'm not bringing you joy. You're not glad to be with me. I'm not um, worth any value. And, um, you really start to begin to wonder, um, how you can begin to return to joy in your life when you're experiencing this. And so I want to pull up here. Um, last week, we really talked about some steps to be able to recover from those big negative, big six. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them negative emotions because they can be used for our good. Um, but they are big six emotions. And um, and so I want to share with you, um, we, we talked about recognizing that we're experiencing that big emotion, right? So if we're talking about shame, naming it, saying, I am feeling a lot of shame right now. And that's really a first step into really, literally by naming it can help your body begin to start saying, to step out of that out of sync mo motion. So we talked a few weeks ago about how our feeling brain functions a little bit faster than our thinking brain. So if we're experiencing that emotion and um, our shame, our thinking brain hasn't really caught up to that yet. So we want to recognize that we're, and then we want to invite God into the situation. And sometimes it may have to just be as simple as like, God help me right? And where then we connect with God by choosing to express gratitude, thanking him for what he's done and what he's going to do. Um, and that can be challenging at the moment. Um, so then if it can, if that part is challenging, um, we want to begin to ask God for his perspective in it. And that takes us back to a little bit of like Emmanuel journaling when we talked about that a few weeks back. And again, you guys can find all of those on our website on the blog, Three Life Essentials. Um, but I wanted to briefly tell you a story of how, um, actually, let me, let me finish. Um, so we want to ask for God's perspective on the situation, you know, um, instead of being consumed by the emotion, we want to begin to open up ourselves to the possibility that the thing is not the thing, right? The, the shame that we're experiencing something about that maybe that's not really the thing. Um, and if you can remember a story of when you've been able to recover from this emotion in the past, you can use that because it will help your body and your mind begin to say, you know what? I've recovered from this once before. I can do it again. And God can help me do it again. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, I'm going to share with you one of my stories of how I came from shame and was able to return to joy. Um, so, I'll just briefly kind of describe the situation. So I was in college and I was living in Oklahoma at the time and I was getting ready to apply for graduate school. Now, um, I'm going to back up, preface that by saying I read a book in the fifth grade um, that helped me really just decide that I wanted to become a speech language pathologist. I wanted to be not only in a helping profession, um, but I knew that I wanted to become a speech pathologist and help um, kids like the woman in the book that I had read. It was a book called Lovey. And um, I still have the book. 
and um, it's a little torn and tattered now. But from the fifth grade, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. And um, I know that's kind of unusual for for most kids. Um, you know, a lot of us don't figure out what we want to do with our lives until later on. But I knew that I wanted to do that. And so um, flash forward into grad into college and going into graduate school. Um, it was a very competitive program. And I remember applying to five different schools so that I could try to ensure that I was getting into a program. And I remember receiving rejection letters from every single school, all five schools. And at the time I, um, had a few roommates and, um, those roommates were also applying and they had gotten into the schools and or gotten into the school that we were applying for. Um, and I remember feeling in that moment, sadness um, and shame. And I, I felt like a, a briefly, I was also felt like I was in some hopeless despair. I had, I was experiencing some hopeless despair, but um, I remember my body just feeling heavy and I really wanted to hide, right? I didn't want to show my face to my roommates. Um, I remember questioning, thinking, is this what I'm supposed to, I thought this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. Now, what am I supposed to do? And I remember sitting on my apartment porch and um, opening up my Bible and so I began to invite God into the situation and I remember beginning to read and, um, and I don't even remember what I was reading in my Bible, but I remember inviting him in and asking what is going on, God, show me for some perspective. What, what am I supposed to be doing what, with life? And, um, and so, um, so in that time, I actually went back home to live with my parents, which was also shameful experience. And um, I remember I spent a year living back with my parents. And I remember thinking, I, I had started to return to joy, but I wasn't, I wasn't fully there. And, um, and I was remembering what God had called me to do. And so I started reapplying. And I also, um, mid-year, I also remember taking the GRE test again, which is to get into graduate school to try to up my scores. My scores didn't end up changing, by the way. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to do whatever I could to try to see what, um, so I could continue in this calling that I felt like I had. And I remember the day that I went to take the GRE again, it was in this little building in Oklahoma City. It was a cold morning, and I remember showing up. Um, it was a very empty building, um, and then there was like a waiting area, and then inside was the little testing cubicle area. And um, I remember going to the waiting area. I stepped um, in front of the cubicle area, signed my name in that I was there to take the test, and then I remember sitting down in the waiting area till they were going to call my name to go into the testing um, area. And I remember sitting out there all alone. It was a very quiet, cold morning, and I was sitting there, and I just remember kind of being brought back to that place of shame and thinking, what is going on here? And I was very kind of absorbed into the moment and really just kind of in my, in my head, silently praying to God and, and trying to get some perspective. And all of a sudden I looked up and in the waiting room, the chair next to me kind of sitting like this um, with me, there was a, a person sitting there mm -hmm. and had a jacket on and a hood and um, I don't remember seeing this person come in or couldn't figure out how all of a sudden I didn't hear this person come in. And I looked up and immediately um, this person looked at me and um, immediately said, she, she had some kind of like little um, booklet in her hands. Um, it was one of those little, um, little devotional books that you can get, it's like a daily devotional. Um, and she, I remember she looked at me straight in the eyes and said, this is for you. And it was opened to a devotional for that day. And I, I remember taking it and just being absorbed immediately into the devotional. I remember reading it. I don't even remember what all it said, um, but I remember I remember feeling like it was just for me, like it was a message that God had just for me. And I looked up to tell the person, thank you. And they were gone. 
And I remember looking around and then being called into the, the testing area and going into the testing area, thinking that I would see them in there. And the person wasn't in there either. And when I came out, the person wasn't there. I never, and no one signed in after me. And I remember thinking, are you thinking what I'm thinking? It was an angel that God sent to send that message to me, a word of encouragement that I was on the right path to continue the course. And that is really what helped me return to joy. Because in that moment, I was not, I was not in graduate school yet. I, I did not get a better score. There weren't anything around, there wasn't anything around me that my circumstances had necessarily changed for me to be able to move from shame to joy. But I was able to because God was able to help me work through that process that I described to you earlier. So if you're just joining, you're going to want to go back to the beginning so I can walk you through this process. And, um, but I know this is going to help you today as you are experiencing one of the big six and you can do this for any of the emotions. And I want you to work through this process because as you share how you returned from fear to joy, or as you returned from shame to joy, or as you are able to work from hopeless despair to joy, it's going to help you and the other person that you're sharing that with. So, um, so a little bit more on that story. Don't you want to know what happened? <laughs> so obviously I did become a speech language pathologist at some point, right? So that following year, I applied to those same five schools with the same scores, the same GRE, the same GPA, and I got into all five schools. So if that doesn't tell you that um, that year, God had a purpose in teaching me and molding me and shaping me and really helping me have experiences that could be used to, to um, have a message for other people, <laughs> it was very obvious. And, um, and so um, I want this to be able to help you as well. So I challenge you to take one of the big six. Um, on our blog, you'll be able to find a worksheet of how you can kind of work through that process of returning from joy or returning to joy from another emotion. It doesn't have to be shame. So I encourage you to work through that process and then share that with someone. In fact, I would love for you to share it with me. I would love for you to hear that, hear that story. Now, next week is a whole new month a whole new uh, shebang of free Friday. So I don't know what's going to be on. Um, so join me to find out if you have some great topics that you want to hear from us about, share them with me in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye, everybody.